You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. Can Alaska had drilled the project in 2019 and they were hitting, they had some nice intercepts, uh, six and a half, six and a half meters at about two and three quarters percent nickel with some uh, lower grade copper, uh, copper credits, about 0.15%. And then uh, two meters at four and a half percent nickel with similar copper value. So there's a lot of potential on this thing. And this, we think this is going to be a, a flagship for us moving forward for sure. Welcome back to Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. And in today's show, we are going to be profiling Metal Energy. This company just IPO'd uh, in Toronto on the Venture Exchange under the ticker M-E-R-G. I invested in this company when it was still private. It's part of the Ore Group. And James Sykes is the new CEO. He's here to tell us about it. So James, welcome back onto the program. My listeners know you also as a uranium CEO, and now you're going after nickel and copper. So you're kind of covering all phases of the electrical vehicle revolution, right? You got uranium for power generation, you got nickel for energy storage, and you got copper for energy transportation, don't you? Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me on the show again, Bill. And yeah, it's this is the way the world is going, Electri- elect- electrification of the world, and I'd like to be a big part of it. Okay, so let's let's jump right into it. You have two assets, key assets. Let's go over your first one, the Manabridge Mine. Uh, talk to us about how you acquired this project and what should investors look for. Manabridge, the Manabridge Mine is in Manitoba, the Thompson Lake Nickel District, which is one of the best nickel districts uh, in in the history of the world and it was acquired through a joint venture we're doing a, an earn in joint venture with can alaska now we do have the option to uh to have 100 percent control after three earn in stages or we can leave it at uh, stage two with a 70 percent earn in which can alaska had staked the project uh, very exciting it's a brownfield and greenfield type of uh, exploration project uh, brownfield being that the historic Manabridge mine is on the project uh, they produce about 1.3 million tons at two and a half percent nickel which is pretty darn high and about 0.3 percent copper as well they went down to 381 meters depth so not that deep at all. But if you look at the the drill results from uh, from when Falcon Bridge had discovered this back in the seventies, they were still following up high, high grade mineralization to depths beyond what they had mined. So the brownfield extension of this thing is that there is potential ore down there. So one of the things that we want to get done uh, within this within these earn in stages is get to that forty three one one resource of what's already there. But it's 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 also the the greenfield exploration, everything along strike and sub parallel system to to Manabridge that looks very similar and exciting. Uh, there's a there's a heck of a lot of potential out here. Can Alaska had drilled the project in 2019, and they were hitting. They had some nice intercepts, uh, six and a half, six and a half meters at about two and three quarters percent nickel with some uh, lower grade copper uh, copper credits, about 0.15 percent, and then. Uh, two meters at four and a half percent nickel with similar copper value. So there's a lot of potential on this thing. And this, we think this is going to be a, a flagship for us moving forward for sure. So another ore group company is QC Copper and Gold. And that the, uh, project there, uh, you took an old Falcon Bridge mine, which was high grade copper veins. And then you did a different model and you're finding disseminated copper as well as those high grade veins. Is that kind of what you're going, that geological model, is that what you're applying to this old Falcon Bridge mine? Yeah, it looks like that. We definitely see some high grade nickel shoots, but there is the potential for disseminated nickel. And when when you compare to other nickel projects around the world that do have uh, large tonnage and low grades, Mana Bridge would fit right in there nice and easily. Uh, you know, we could have you could have an, a, a lower grade and just have a larger resource. But really, it is that high grade. High grade really sells. From my experience in the Athabasca, that's what you're always going for. So and that's what will be our primary focus moving forward. But again, we won't uh, we won't bypass any uh, any type of lower grade mineralization as the price of nickel continues to move up now uh, everything becomes a little bit more economic so james uh, what should investors expect next in terms of the next few months and what you're going to do with this project 
quite a bit of activity. So now that we've completed the, the IPO and the financing and we're listed now, we've got about 7 million in the bank, which will allow us to move forward uh, at an expedited expedited time frame for, for moving Manabridge forward. We have it, it's all permitted. It is ready to go. Can Alaska will be the operators. And it's just, it seems like January, we will be getting this thing moving. So starting up with some following follow-up drilling, trying to see at depth, but also on strike potential. But as I mentioned earlier, we do want to get to that uh, 43 101 resource stage. So that will be a large focus of uh, maybe not this, maybe not this winter as would be more on the exploration side uh, with, uh, with some definition drilling, but uh, definitely going into the summer once we have a better indication of some of the controls that we learned from this winter, we'll, we'll push for a, a larger summer program. So if Can Alaska is the operator, are you going to be sitting down with them and approving the drill program? Is that how this JV is working? Yeah, we've already done so. We've already we've already had some uh, some nice meetings back and forth. And uh, Can Alaska is a great group to work with. Very knowledgeable guys, uh, outstanding outstanding geologists, and yeah, they've they've got a good plan for this. So, and how many meters are we looking at? To start between twenty five hundred to five thousand. Okay, and so results then would be coming in Q one of next year. Is that uh... that's the aim? Just Q one, Q two of next year. But uh, yeah, and you can drill all year round. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We everything's road access at Manor Bridge. Easy to get to. Uh, yeah, it's no issues on that end. Okay, and as you said, you have the potential to own one hundred percent via yes. your agreement. Okay. That would be after, yeah, after 300 stages, which could take anywhere from two to three years. Okay. Your next project is the Strange Project in Thunder Bay, Ontario. How did this project come to you and what is the prospectivity here? This is an interesting one. This is definitely very interesting. This is pure recon exploration greenfield. It was brought to us by a couple of Inco geologists who really felt that this area had a lot of similarities to other deposits within the area, uh, most notably uh, the Eagle Mine, which is owned by Lundin, used to be Rio Tinto, which uh, that's, uh, that's quite a valuable resource in the state of Michigan. And it's, I think it's the first nickel mine in the States in a very long time or ever. And it's one of the uh, first, first mine in Michigan in 20 odd years or so. So it's, it is definitely an exciting play, but we're, we're within the same geological environment that we're in this uh, oceanic mid-ocean ridge or historic oceanic mid-ocean ridge. And the, the potential for, for mineralization along these type of things, uh, is enormous again with with eagle being there there are some other deposits along uh, other nickel deposits and copper deposits along this whole uh, geological corridor as well but it, it, it the analogy or the, the geological model is also global that's you know, yeah you can go to to russia and find the same type of of geological model here so we do think that the prospective nature of this area is quite high and we definitely want to get drilling where permitted We've got road access there. It's all season road to this project as well. We're uh, you know, tens of kilometers southwest of Thunder Bay, Ontario. So it's a well-known, well-known mining jurisdiction up in that area. And yeah, permitted for January. So we look to be drilling that alongside Manor Bridge. Now that uh, this strange project is 100% controlled by Energy Metals, and we will be doing an earn-in with the with the optioners as well. Okay, so this one, it's more of a binary play, isn't it? Uh, on a geophysical anomaly, that's what yes. we're looking at? Yeah. And so what are the next steps? You're not going to go straight to drilling, are you, uh, to test this uh, geophysical anomaly, or are you? We would look at doing a little bit more geophys. Uh, we, we have to do a little bit more, I guess, detailed work on this to see what actually, uh, what is available to us, a little bit more investigating. What we have seen from the geophys is exciting in itself. Uh, however, uh, looking at this type of environment, I would prefer to see a little bit more geophys going into it, whether we do it airborne or ground. But that being said, it is not a bad idea to put a couple of drill holes into this area to help us learn some geophysics and learn what we would need to do 
to to better hit this uh, hit this target, hit this project moving forward. Now, you can do a number of different types of geophysical surveys, and they may not help you in 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 the long run if you don't know your model, if you don't know what you're what you're trying to do, or even the rock types. If you know your rock types going forward. You can you can really strategize to have the most effective uh, geophysical coverage possible. So it's kind of you know, egg before uh, chicken before the egg, egg before the chicken. It's still being assessed, and we look to have that. Uh, we look to have a complete, robust exploration plan moving forward before well before the year's out. Okay, let's talk treasury. So you just IPO'd. How much do you have in the bank? What's your share structure like? What's your market cap at? So we've got about seven million in the bank. Uh, very exciting, and that's plenty to get us going for sure. Uh, we've got about seventy-five million shares outstanding. So it's you know, it's a nice, nice, healthy uh, share structure. And right now, at about uh, twenty cents, we should have about fifteen million market cap. Okay, so let's compare to some successful nickel copper explorers developers. Uh, if you're successful with these projects or one of the projects, you're at a $15 million market cap. Uh, what are some comparables you're hoping to get to? I like comparing to Canada Canada Nickel Company. Again, they've got a huge resource. It's a mammoth resource, but to me, it's it would be considered low grade, uh, about 0.2 percent nickel average. And they've got a resource of 250, or they've we got a market cap, sorry, of about $250 million. Now, if we are to have the same type of success and be valued at, at such, a, such a price, and we're looking at over a 10% or 10-fold increase already. So that's the upside potential that Metal Energy brings to our investors is we've got plenty of room for upside potential. And that's what I hope that we can realize for everybody. And since you're also the CEO of Baseload Energy, I have to ask the question, how are you going to manage being the CEO of another company? How will that work in terms of dividing your time? It was 24 hours in a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> you do have kids too, I know, and yes, a wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it, it's great. Uh, it's actually quite manageable. Being part of the org group is one of the best things that I could have ever had in my career. Uh, org group are fantastic. They're basically the hub for really getting a lot of things done. And there's so much support, uh, not just on the financial side, technical support, administrative support. So it's it's quite easy to, to manage both. And that's exactly how we're doing it right now. Uh, you know, when, when we need assistance for both metal energy and for baseload, you know, or groups right there, and they've been, yeah, they've been extremely helpful the entire way through. So uh, with the discovery of baseload, it has taken up a lot of time. But as we grow baseload as well with uh, more of an, an internal company or internal employees, I guess, that they can start taking on a lot of more responsibilities as well, which would allow me to uh, diversify my time equally between metal energy and, and baseload. We've, we've got, for baseload, we've probably got a 12 to 24 year, 24 month plan already established. So baseload might be going into cruise control and let's just hit that one hard and then focus more so on metal energy. But yeah, and you're, you're more hands-on too at the project level with baseload than metal energy too, right? If Can Alaska is going to be the operator specifically at the Manor Bridge mine. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that does uh, alleviate a lot of the requirements for what we need to do. And follow-up questions if investors have it. Uh, your website is metalenergy.ca. Ticker symbol again is again is M-E-R-G on the Venture Exchange. And should investors email you with follow-up questions, James? I'm always available. Email J Sykes. That's J-S-Y-K-E-S at uraniumgeologist.com. Not not uranium and nickel and copper geologist.com too long. Ago. Not yet. Not okay. yet. Nope. All right. You're still known for your uranium discoveries. Well, uh, the company again is Metal Energy. Website is metalenergy.ca. James, thanks for this overview. Thanks, Bill. Always a pleasure. 